spoilers are never ending. I feel like I'm in purgatory. Surge of salvation is one white mana for an instant. You win permanence, you control, gain hexproof until end of turn. Prevent all damage that black and or red sources would deal to creatures you control this turn. Yo, this is so ridiculous. Surge of Salvation is top tier protection and I am not being hyperbolic. It isn't Teferi's protection, but like it's close enough and standard and negates basically the entire black and red card pool Invoke Despair specifically is gutted. This gave me whiplash, I had to double take so quickly. White players in standard, you should use this card, it's broken. Even in commander, think about all the red and black based nonsense that happens to you every single game with your friends. So many red players have Blasphemous Act, tons of players have Hand Attack, and just so many more ways to make your life miserable as a white player, but Surge of Salvation, attached to an Isochron Scepter, you're basically invincible, enjoy never ever losing again, that is so gross, it is so strong. C double is two of anything and two blue for an instant. This spell can't be copied. Choose one. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, you may choose both. Copy target spell. You may choose new targets for the copy or create a token that's a copy of target creature. Thank goodness the spell can't be copied or else it would end up going infinite with itself. Good catch there. I don't even want to think about what happens with this in Panoptic Mirror or Arcane Bombardment. Those are going to be some really, really fun rules discussions that I do not want to be a part of. Let's just move on right now. Pile on is four mana for an instant with Convoke, destroy target creature, planeswalker, surveil too. This has real lethal scheme energy and I'm here for it. This is definitely standard playable. Convoke gives good flexibility to aggro or mid-range decks that need to get rid of Shieldred. Surveil is a nice add-on. It only takes one black specific mana so it can be easily cast in multicolored decks and it's instant speed. Sure, there are a ton of great removal spells in standard right now, but this will earn its spot in various strategies. Planeswalkers exist and they are annoying. Cheap, easy to run, instant speed, card filtering, versatile, it is standard playable. Invasion of Kaldheim is three of anything and one red for a four counter siege battle. When it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Until the end of your next turn, you may play cards exiled this way. Oh look, another card for Prosper, because again, we can't go nine seconds without giving Prosper something awesome. When it's defeated, this invasion transforms into an enchantment called, oh no, Pyre of the World Tree. You can discard a land card to have the Pyre deal two damage to any target. Whenever you discard a land card, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Quote, the warriors of Kaldheim burn the soul of their world to keep it out of Phyrexian's hands. Oh dear, I think I might cry the World Tree. No, oh no, oh gosh, oh dear. Ancient Imperiosaurus, five of anything and two green for a 6-6 six, six dinosaur with Convoke, Trample, and War 2. It enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each creature that convoked it. So this is what happens when Wizards just throws all their mechanics and keywords at the wall and whatever sticks is what goes on a creature. I love it a lot. Ancient Imperiosaur is a Chad Dinosaur. In any kind of token deck, this is incredibly lethal. In a potent token deck, you could realistically pay zero for this, tap seven creatures, get 14 plus one plus one counters. It drops as a zero mana 2020 with trample and built-in protection. What a ridiculous payoff card for go wide decks in a multitude of formats. Literally any green token deck, any of them at all, enjoy your new 2020 free payoff. It's nuts. Deep Root Wayfinder is two mana for a two, three more folk scout. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or battle, surveil one, then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Really neat throwback to explore from Ixlon. Big fan of this design, the card's decent. Three toughness will help with surviving combat a bit longer than most cards at a similar cost. It also punishes slower decks, allowing you to ramp off the back of their weakness. It does die to cut down, which is unfortunate, but still, it's being pushed for standard play. Maybe out of the board against slower decks? I'll have to test with this. Invasion of Muraganda is four of anything in one green for a six counter siege battle. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, then that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. I love battles as removal spells. They are quite hefty. I'm sure that's about balancing, but still, let's see what we get when his very high six counters are removed. Primordial Plasm, a 4-4 ooze. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature gets plus two plus two and loses all abilities until end of turn. Flavorful at the very least. Could have guessed this would be the backside based on everything we know about Muraganda. The biggest thing here for me though is the mana cost is tough to get past. I understand there needs to be balancing for battles that are removal spells, but like this is a very prohibitive cost. And even if you do end up using it, if you ever want to see the backside, six counters, that's also a lot. This takes a hefty investment to see results from casting the battle itself to flipping it over. It's a neat card, but a few mana too expensive and a few counters too many. Invasion of Chandelar is three of anything and two green for a four counter siege battle. When it enters the battlefield, return up to three target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Three permanent cards? Triple recursion? That is aggressive. 
you get your three best permanents back to your hand. This could be important creatures, artifacts you sacrificed, even battles are fair game. And four defense counters, that's not that much at all. Seems like a pretty reasonable number given the power of the card itself. When it is defeated and transforms, it becomes Leyline Surge, an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. What? Yeah, okay, Invasion of Chandelar is just plain nutty. Every part of this card is amazing in every way possible. Not only does it have a low number of defense counters, at least that's my opinion, but it turns into a hand version of Planar Bridge. I'm thinking Kodama of the East, Tree Loves Permanence, maybe even Vivictus Asmati the Dyer, plays into the Permanence Matters kind of theme the deck has going. And sure, to be fair, it is expensive and doesn't technically provide immediate board presence when you play it, but the Invasion isn't an on-the-curve kind of play. It's a late game play, or a play when you've set up sufficient hand and graveyard size. Really impressive battle. The quality of this card type is all over the place, I swear. Ozolith Shattered Spire is 2 mana for a legendary artifact with cycling. If one or more plus 1 plus 1 counters would be placed on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 counters are put on it instead. You can also pay 2 mana and tap it to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature or artifact you control, activate only as a sorcery. So we've got hardened scales, but slightly more expensive, and it comes with a boatload of bells and whistles. If you want to make a standard legal counters aggro deck, now might be the time. You've got Teething Wormlet, Skrelv, Simeon Simulacrum, Botanical Brawler, Bloated Contaminator, this could actually just be a list soon. It's one I've been working on for a while, but can never really make work. Maybe Ozolith is the consistency the deck needs. I'll give it another shot. It is a good card. Invasion of Lorwyn is four of anything, one black and one green for a five counter siege battle. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-elf creature and opponent controls with power X or less, where X is the number of lands you control. We have another really cool removal spell on another awesome plane that is so expensive. I mean, dang, how is the six mana with five counters on it? It's so chunky. Let's see what it transforms into. Winnowing Forces is an elf warrior and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't even dislike the card at all. I love that we're seeing Lorwyn again after so long. But six mana for a conditional removal spell that turns into a vanilla-ish creature, it's a heavy, heavy investment to make this work. Again, the power levels on these battles are like a roller coaster. Invasion of Xerax is two of anything, one white and one blue for a four counter siege battle, rough translation. When it enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand. It's nice that this gives the ability to play it without having to unsummon a creature, but again, four mana is high for that effect, especially at sorcery speed. When it's defeated, it transforms into Vertex Knight, an angel knight with flying whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. That is not what I was expecting based on the front face of this card, but I do understand it based on Xerax. Weird, weird card. I'm thinking this has the most value in limited as unsummons against big creatures can be a little more expensive and be alright, although those usually come with a creature attached. Flipping this battle specifically is incredibly important. The justification for playing this can't be made by the front face alone, so you're going to want this in a go-wide strategy where flipping to the angel basically ends the game. If you can do that, game ending limited card, and if you can't, I'd maybe avoid this one. Kogelan Yadaru is two of anything, two red and two green for a whopping 7-7 legendary creature ape dinosaur turtle. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. It gains trample and haste until end of turn, or it fights target creature you don't control. You can also pay two of anything, one red, one green, and discard Kogelan Yadaru to destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Shuffle K and Y into your library from your graveyard, draw a card. First things first, look at the artwork. Kogla has taken a Phyrexian and impaling it on Yadaru's spiky shell. That is just so savage and I love it. Now, while the card is monstrously huge as a 6 mana 7-7 seven, seven, that basically comes with a removal spell on it, the discard clause is more interesting to me. For 4 mana, you get to tuck the card, get it naturalized, and it replaces itself in your hand. That adds monumental flexibility to the card. You're basically getting a 6 mana 7-7 seven, seven with haste and trample, a 6 mana 7-7 seven, seven plus removal spell, or a 4 mana naturalize plus draw card. It's great. This answers so many threats, fighting for creatures, trample and haste to take down walkers or battles if you want. The discard clause for artifacts and enchantments for a gruel card is covering all the bases really well. I like it a lot. And as always, stay tuned right here for more March of the Machine spoilers as they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.